Hi, welcome back to the Lee Kentner House here in Galveston, Texas. We're a nonprofit set up to restore and preserve this incredible Victorian mansion here on Broadway Street. I'm Jamie and I'm the president of the nonprofit. And last week you saw Heather, one of our volunteers, getting to work on the stained glass window area. The stained glass windows were kind of the crowning jewel of this house. We've been very sad that they had to be removed and put in storage for safekeeping until we can afford to repair them. But I came up with this idea to paint the plywood that was in the window to make it look like the stained glass. So in the last video, Heather did all that prep work. She did a beautiful job full painting the background of the blue glass. And this week we're going to take you through the rest of the process of getting the actual decorative painting on there. So let's get started. Okay, let's uh, let's bring the ladder down for a second so we can both. Oh, really? Have room. Are you going to stand up here on this wobbly scaffolding? Are you really? Give it the okay. Jiggly wiggly. All right, let me. <laughs> oh boy, let me give you the scaffold. Let me. Oh, that doesn't want to stay done. Okay. I think you can leave it. Man muscles, man muscles. I'm summoning it. them. And that's actually one of the lighter versions. Of You're gonna come up here? I'll this is the best up. side to come up on. This one. Oh good, and you're bringing jiggly. your square. Look how jiggly it is. It's not bad. It's jiggly. I may be on my hands and knees doing this. <laughs> here, I'll hold on to you, because okay. this is. Oh, I'm good. You're good? Don't get a splinter. Okay. So, in the picture, yeah. from this corner, yep. it comes down. So, so you're going to use that? Part. So, my thought was just to make it like, we would oh, have well, that's 90. Easy. Okay, let's see if this is level. Let's it, see if this is level first. <laughs> Sometimes the hardest part of any project is just getting started. And in this case, we had to get the grid work laid out for that bamboo lattice before we could do anything else. In the last video, we spent a lot of time going back and forth about how wide to make the border. It was actually critical that we not get that border too wide because it wouldn't leave enough room in the center and we might end up with the lattice that was too small and awkward looking. We wanted to get the look and feel of the original window and we didn't have that window with us so we can't take measurements. That's why all the discussion. And we can't just start making squares the size we want because we might end up with something uneven on the edge with a little odd piece left over. If we get that center section right, getting the grid laid out is actually a relatively simple process. It just requires a little geometry. The easiest way to see this is to look at the original window. I've superimposed some lines to show you what I mean. If you look at the upper corners, you can see the straight red lines coming down at 45 degree angles. Across the top, it's divided into thirds. See that green line? That creates four points of reference. Each corner, see how it creates three half squares or three right triangles across the top? With just those four points of reference and a framing square, making the grid is easy. Let me show you on a piece of paper. Sorry for the shadows. I don't really have a good way to film this. I've set up kind of a contraption with some buckets and the door to a dog crate. But anyway, let's pretend this rectangle is now that inner rectangle that is the window that we're trying to do the grid on. And just like in that overlay on the actual window. If you start in the corner with a 45 degree line and in the other corner using that framing square, the 45 degree line, it intersects and makes right triangles. And I'm going to eyeball and divide this into three. And again, we just used our framing square. To make a right triangle. Our right angle. 
you can see the grid starts developing. I just moved over. We're not measuring anything. We're not doing anything other than dividing this line into thirds. And as we keep moving down, everywhere it intersects the edge, we can just continue the process. And eventually, you end up with the grid. And it comes out just like, oh, my framing score is always tricky to figure out which way to flip it. Sorry, wiggling my paper all around. And this is not very precise because I can't see what I'm doing, but you get the general idea. You end up with just what we have in the window. We have the three half triangles at the top, three full triangles intersecting at the edge. So we don't have any little leftover bits and everything is even and just like it is in the original window. And like we talked about in the last video, the bamboo becomes the grid work for putting in the flowers. So you'll see later, we look at a picture of the window, identify what's in that one grid and add our little leaves and flowers where they go. Once that was done, it was just a matter of using those lines to take a paintbrush, the width that we wanted the bamboo and start coloring in the paint and creating the bamboo and the grid. I started working on the bamboo because we had a tan and a brown that were close enough in color that I could just use them straight out of the can. Heather wasn't wild about any of the colors that we had to use for the border. There's kind of a rusty brown and then a brighter yellow. So she went off to dig through the paint and ended up doing her mixology thing to come up with a custom color blend from some of the things we had to create a color that she was happy with. I was able to just freehand the bamboo using those grid lines we drew as the center line of the bamboo. It's okay if it's a little bit wobbly because the bamboo has an organic feel and it's one of the things that's so neat about this stained glass window is there are no straight cuts. Everything has movement in it and curve in it. When you look at this window up close, it's just amazing to me that they could cut all of these various shapes and put them together to form this window. You're doing a good job. Starting coat. Just getting it laid out. It's really hard to see. It's got lots of shadows on it. I know. You might have to just get the light and like hold it right at it or maybe put it on the scaffolding and shine it onto it or something. Okay, I got this kind of a color. I don't know if we like this or not, if we want to go with something other than that. We'll have to alter it some more. Is it red enough or do we want it to be redder than that? It sort of came out purpley. But I can certainly go just get the red and do redder. I think it's good enough for an undercoat. We can, we we just can have to model add. a brighter, mm -hmm. like a, we can get a more mm -hmm. yellow red and model over it. Mm -hmm. and that can be our dark tone instead of our light tone underneath. It's just a, it, it is an unusual color, but I put like reds and I, I just think we need to get it something on here just to outline it. come back and play with it. Yeah, I mean, look, look how awesome it's already oh, wow. looking. Oh, yeah, so much better. Yeah.
That's going to make... It kind of looks like bamboo. Well, yeah. Now, but you'll get your little lines oh, on it. Oh, all of the black is on, and it's and it the, makes the little, little connections and the uh -huh. bamboo parts to it. It's all straight right now. But when you paint, you'll paint your little bamboo thingies on there, the little, light, light, yeah. that slight curve, and it'll give it that bamboo fill. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, what am I doing next now? You want me to go with the bright uh, yellow the bright border? Yellow border yeah. Okay, I'll go get a bright yellow. Once we got going, Heather and I were both shocked at how quickly things went. One of our biggest problems was just the lighting in this area. The winter sun is very low and the house is pretty dark now. We do have lights up in this area, but just one light bulb in each room. And that's not a lot of light when you're trying to do work like this. But we may do, and you don't have to be too precise with this kind of work. It was good enough to get by. Heather got her colors mixed to her satisfaction, and then we were both up on the scaffold working. There was plenty of room for both of us, and things just accelerated. We were both really pleased with how things were turning out, and we decided to make a big leap forward and start on the flowers. Between Heather and I, we have a lot of art supplies. I got dirty. <laughs> It is so filthy up here. Let me get this out of the way. Well, it's just going to get dirty. I'll step on that. Okay. So I can't. Ugh. Just that one leg doesn't bend. Mm -mm. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it steady. I'm trying to All make right. it not wobble around very much. All right, I need my iPad. So this is called painting with an iPad. Here, let me let me hold the I need iPad. It to be, oh, like that. I'm gonna hold okay. the iPad. So it's not the center one. It's not this one. It's this one, and it's got a leaf, three leaf cluster, right there. This one has one leaf right here. Let's start with one leaf. Mm-hmm. Green. Oh boy, the bikes. Okay, then this one is a leaf. Maybe another leaf. I can't see. I know, it's hard. This light, it just casting such a shadow. Yeah. Three leaf cluster. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the one over that direction. Yep. Good job. Perfect. Yay! When you come back with our. And the black will have to outline everything. And this is pretty. And take pretty up into the top of that corner. But you know, because it's transparent. Get it's that one right soft. there. Get that one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And that's then that whole square has all the leaves in it. Okay. So this one. Mm -hmm. I like the bright green the best. Mm -hmm. really well, it's going to show. It's going to it shows the better. It's going to show better. Heather held my iPad so I could blow up sections of the window and again look at each grid made by the lattice individually and try to replicate within that grid what the window looked like. My initial goal was to do something called one stroke decorative painting where you load your brush with multiple colors and as you stroke the brush it leaves highlights this is it's hard to explain but here's a sample board i did for another uh, decorative painting project i was doing on some furniture a while ago and you can see the leaves have multiple colors in them but it's all made by putting the different paint colors on your brush and making one stroke that really did not work real well this plywood was very rough and it was less artistic painting and more just trying to get the color 
onto the wood and into the grooves of the plywood. So I kind of made the decision on the fly to just use this one bright green color that was very pretty and same thing with the flowers. I mixed up some colors, put on one coat, let it dry, then came back with a smaller brush and did some highlights and variations of different colors to give it depth. If you look at this while we're painting early on, it looks very childlike and simplistic, almost like a coloring book because it's very flat because it's just the one color and you don't get any depth or movement as we add more and more layers of paint as it dries and then come back and outline in the black you can see it changes dramatically how it looks to the eye oh my gosh i'm down looking at it from afar and i have to say i'm quite impressed with ourselves we are fabulous <laughs> And it doesn't even have the black outlining on it yet, which is really going to make it pop. And I can't stand it, so I'm going to get some black and work on that bamboo at the bottom because it's been dry for a long time. The flowers will take. Oh yeah, for sure. We'll start working dry. on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, but I can do a little bit on the bottom just just because I want to. You can. Once I finished all the flowers and the leaves and Heather had finished her border, we let it dry for just a little bit and then we grabbed liner brushes and both jumped right in to doing all of that charcoal black outlining. This is what really brought the window together. It was quick work because we didn't have to think about anything. We just had to go around what was already there but it was a little tedious and there was a lot to go around and it's amazing how many things we missed we thought we were through and we'd step back and look at it and find areas that needed to be done and we'd do that and we'd step back and look again and find more areas but we finally got it done and we're just again so shocked it was beyond what we in Visioned. I hate to keep patting ourselves on the back, but we were expecting something kind of stylized to give the idea of stained glass. We just had no idea when we started this that it would actually look like the stained glass. We had people coming in for tours who thought it was stained glass. Now, they were far away. They were at the front door looking in, but still, that's the effect that we hoped for but never thought we would actually achieve. Okay. Okay. Ta-da! We're getting there. Just got to do the upper section. I think you need to show a picture of the one okay. and yeah. like next to this so you, we can see that we did sort of Damn, we're good. good. We did pretty good. We did pretty good. <laughs> We worked late in the day. Normally we're out of here around 3, 3.30 or so trying to miss traffic going back to Houston, but we got so engrossed in the painting that we just kept going and going and going, trying to finish this bottom rectangular section. Heather's not here this week, but I'm going to try, I make no promises, to get up on the scaffolding with a step ladder. She used that little giant A-frame ladder she's very comfortable on that I'm not one it's heavy to get up and down and two I like a wider platform to stand on so I'm going to put a step ladder up here I've also worked on the scaffolding to brace it up against the wall so it doesn't have any wiggle in it that wiggle I don't have the balance that she does she did gymnastics and she's comfortable in all kind of positions I'm not I have to be super stable and still when I'm up high and I can't tilt my head back it makes me dizzy so I'm going to put this tall step ladder up here like I said I've got this stabilized so there's no movement in it and if I think I can safely do it I'm going to continue on with putting the flowers and the letting up in the upper section I may need Heather to come back and do the tippy top but I think I can reach up at least a couple of feet. But before I get started, it was filthy dirty up there. I'm going to grab a brim, climb up, and sweep that off. All right, that's pretty stable. Pat, our wonderful new volunteer. Say hi, Pat. Hi there. Hi. Come join us. And you can see I can reach about a foot, so I don't need to go up too much higher. 
And this looks a little higher than it is, because remember, Joe's shooting from way down on the ground, and the scaffolding's only about five feet tall or less. So it feels high when you're on the ground floor, but from the landing of the stairs, it's not that high. Okay, ooh, that makes a mess. All right, you can hand me up that ladder. Yeah. And this is much lighter weight and much more secure for me. I think you need to talk louder. This is, we forgot our mic again. I took it home to charge and... <laughs> what, what's this we? We, we didn't forget <laughs> I anything. I forgot the mic again. <laughs> but you can see this is smaller and more stable. And I don't have to go up very high on it. Plus, I have something I can hang on to, and these steps are very wide. So I think I can reach everything I need to do from right here with the brush, or at least the majority of it. I wish I could turn it around and face this, but I think the footprint is too wide, and I don't want to get too close to the edge of the scaffolding. So I think that will work for now. I'm going to go down and mix up my paints and come back and get started on this. I am going to freehand it. I'm going to look at a picture on my computer first, but I'm not going to risk without a helper trying to hold the iPad and get it exact. We'll just get close enough. We'll be the only ones that know. So let me get started. Okay, a small change of plans. Not only did I take my microphone home, I took it home in the box that I had my paint brushes in and my palette because I was going to work on Christmas decorations at home. And I'm going on record as saying I'm not at all sad about this change Just in plans. Not sad, so I have all the paints, but I do not have my brush set. So I'm going to have to find another tour today, and I'll do that later in the week. Your hoarding tendencies. Joe's not happy because I went up in my stash in the tool closet and I found a couple of brushes that will work so I am going to go up and I can at least outline um, the stained glass on the side. I'm not sure about doing my flowers and leaves. This is not really the right kind of decorative painting brush for that but it might do but at least I can get started. And I wanted to show you the paint that we were using. This is all leftover paint from different projects that Heather had in her business or I've had from doing rent houses. And between us, we have a ton of colors. This is a color called Black Fox. And it's just a nice, soft, kind of charcoal gray. It's a little bit thick for outlining smoothly on that rough plywood. So I'm adding just a touch of glaze to it to thin it out just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and use my brush to clean that out. I'm going to, have to go get some water to put that in. my hammers have disappeared except my weird chipping hammer. But I'm just gonna stir that up with my brush because my brush is gonna get pretty grossed out anyway. Normally I'd be very careful not to get the paint up that high on the brush, but this is not great artistic work. All right, I washed my brush. I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this one. It's a natural, very soft bristle and it doesn't have a lot of form to it so I don't know that that will work for my flowers and it's about 90% humidity here today so I'm going back to my lovely ponytail look and I am going to clean up this can ram and all I've done is just take a screwdriver flathead screwdriver and put it over and run the wet towel down around that groove and get that nice and cleaned out. A little bit dried. All right, so I think that will do. Let's go get started. If you 
looked closely at the picture of the stained glass, you saw this border is not brick. It's actually a brownish colored glass with a bright yellow liner before the bamboo. So that's what we've tried to recreate here. And the lighting is not great. It would be nice if we had the lighting light up here. But this part is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to work on that. With my paintbrush dilemma resolved, I got busy, and the, my ladder configuration worked really well. I was happy with it. Unfortunately, I just could not bring myself to step up to that last platform, so I could not reach about the top eight inches, which was just a tiny bit of the arch at the very top. I tried for about two seconds and I was just uncomfortable so I gave it up and we'll have to wait for Heather to come back and do that. We're going full on willy nilly. Oh. <laughs> it's so random. It's so random. I should be working on the electrical instead. While I was up there working Joe and our new volunteer Pat took on the chore of scraping the pocket doors going into the library. The paint is very loose and it needs to come off. I rooted around in my tool room some more and I came up with a better brush, not a great brush, but a better brush for doing the leaves and the petals of the flower. So I decided to go ahead and see if I could get this thing finished today. I thought I had time so I mixed up the paint and got to it. I wasn't super pleased with how it looked. I was just working from kind of memory and looking at a picture of the window. Again I didn't want to hold the iPad in one hand and paint with the other. I needed to be hanging onto that ladder with one hand where, whenever I could. So um, it just didn't look right to me but I was committed so I kept on going. All right, there's a lot of glare to the light but I want to get up and show you a couple of things about the painting. This is always hard when you do things on different days. The color mix that I used here in the bottom panel for the flowers is a little different than the top. And the green is a little more transparent. It had more glaze in it than up here. I had a different brush, so the strokes are different. But I think a lot of that will not be visible once I get the kind of charcoal came lead painted on there. And when I first took a look at this, I had the idea that there were vines in green, but they're not. When you looked closer at the stained glass, the viney structure is made by the caming. And it's necessary because, for example, look at this leaf. They couldn't put a leaf just in the middle of blue. You'd have to cut a hole in the glass and fit something. So every time there's a leaf, it has to be connected with the caming so that they can cut one piece of blue, the piece of green, the piece of blue. So all that caming coming out from the point, same thing with the flower, gives that illusion of a vine transferring over and carrying these flowers. Now from the ground, these flowers look a little better. These are very flat and plain because they don't have the layers of paint on them yet. They have to dry. I have to come in. What I'm going to do right now is put the jeweled center in, let that dry, and then do the dark caming. And that will really change the look of this. So I'm going to put down the phone because I absolutely cannot be up here filming and showing you that process and being safe on the ladder. But I will come back and show you after I add the jewels to the center of the flowers and a little bit of the caming. 
Okay, I've got one I can reach from the ground and maybe film, but I can't look through the camera. I have to look at my hand. So hopefully I can hold the camera steady enough to stay in frame. You can see this needs to be in sections. that if this were the stained glass, could be individual pieces of glass. And then the tip needs to be connected to something. So again, so this could be an individual piece of glass that was cut. Okay, I realize I just said I was not going to film and paint at the same time, but I was able to stand completely flat-footed on the scaffolding and loop my arm through the ladder for support and hang on and do this safely but you can tell that I really could not pay attention to the phone I was holding on and generally pointing it in that direction but I had to pay attention to what I was doing so it's going all over the place but at least I was able to capture a tiny bit of the process to show you guys how that outlining works and how it really helps make those colors pop and how those connections are made from one element of the window to another. In this last time-lapse segment, I think you can really see the difference because all I'm doing here is adding that black outline. So as you watch this short segment, you can see how the painting really comes to life with the contrast of that black where we go from that simple kind of flat look to something that really pops and catches the eye. It's just amazing to me how a little bit of change can make such a big difference visually. And you will notice that tiny bit at the top that I just could not reach, no matter how hard I wanted to. You need help? Do you need extra set of hands? No, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know why I even ask. Like, like, what is your end game here? What are you trying to do? No. I need to get home. I still have to go to the grocery store. And make my family suffer. This is a hard no for me. As long as I don't have to witness it. I mean, you could just wait for Heather, who is nimble like a cat and used to working at heights and doesn't have vertigo. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, Joe's being a party pooper and says we have to go home. I was willing to try to put this up back the way we had it. 
at the beginning to do that last tiny bit way up top. It's not even this much left to do, but just says I have to take her home. So that's going to be it for today. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I think it makes a big difference when you walk into this house and it's much better to look at for the next 10 years or so than that horrible plywood that we had there. So thanks for watching. We're the Lee Kempner House in Galveston. Be sure and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and like and subscribe to everything. It really helps us reach other people who might enjoy these videos and every view we get, we earn a little money and it helps towards the restoration of this house. So thanks for watching. We will see you next time here in Galveston, Texas.